Um, it bothers me. Most of you who've had me for class know that I have asked multiple classes what they think it is because I'm trying to get like ideas for like what it is. Um, I haven't been able to figure it out. It bothers me to this day. No one, everyone else has probably moved on, but I have not. Okay. Okay, now this is working, so the PPL is up and running. Okay, so let's look at a lot of these problems here. Um, and I'll post this online. Everyone got one? Yeah. yeah. This will be useful for you for doing the exam, which I got to start thinking about here. Um, Okay, but this is true. So uh, back in the day when people used to watch news, um, this was Ted Koppel, who's dead? He died of lung cancer, smoking. Um, so this is back in the 80s when everyone was like really concerned about drugs. I mean, like E.N.C. Reagan was saying we should say no to drugs and all these bad things were gonna happen if we did it. Um, so this statement was, the, the, the TV host was, do you know what's happened to the price of drugs? Price of cocaine way down, price mm -hmm. of marijuana way down. Um, you don't have to be an expert in economics that when the price goes down, it means more stuff and stuff coming in. That's the point again. So what would that look like then? So what was what would Ted Koppel's explanation look like? What would that be? What would that actually look like? Like a supply demand theory. Yeah, and what would be what's and what's he specifically then saying? Um, <laughs> was well, kind of easier. Just if you look in the explanation, what's happening? Supply there should be shifting to the right. Correct. All right. So that's what uh, Ted Koppel was saying. So he's looking at the price. And just saying, dude, price is going down, so obviously more stuff's coming in. So this would be an argument that you would use, obviously, if you were for, you know, like burning down crops of some kind, right? Or prosecuting, you know, the drug dealers to try to reduce the supply. Um, so what will, you know, part B to this would be, well, we try to figure out some way to test find out how much stuff is actually coming in, right? Like maybe we could like, you know, have like a plane camera trying to determine like how many marijuana fields are, are there, right? Or we could try to figure out some way of like um, how much stuff is coming in. So obviously this is hard because in the black market, it's hard to tell what's going on if it's illegal, but we could try to find some ways of doing it, right? Like we obviously know we have a meth problem in the U.S., we obviously know we have a oxy problem in the U.S. because, dude, there's more people doing it, right? So there's got to be more people using it, right? I mean, statistically, there's a strong correlation between people ODing and people using it, right? The more people that use it, the more people that OD. I'm sure we could come up with some similar ways of a test of figuring out this, right? So we could basically set up a statistical test of trying to find what's called proxy variables. So, right? How many Ziploc bags are people buying, right? How many, uh, you know, how many package mailers are people buying? Because, right, it turns out that most drugs just come in through the mail, right? Maybe I can even say, how many packages is shiting mailing from his PO box, right? That all weigh uh, 50 grams or less, right? Or right, I'm sure we could come up with some way to statistically determine that. But the reason why I asked for B is because then. What about part C? What other way could I have to get um, the price falling? Well, instead of supply increasing, it could be that people don't want as much, so the demand is exactly right. It could be that people just don't want to smoke it as much, right? Um, <laughs> that would be a perfectly reasonable explanation. But look at the Right, this is when the politician or even the newscaster knows a little bit of economics, which is actually kind of dangerous in this situation because um, they both suggest two very different policy approaches to this. One is suggesting, right, it's the dealers that we have to attack and they are the problem. Whereas the second one would say something like, 
hey, maybe our anti, you know, drug campaign is actually being is quite effective. Oh God, I remember that. Dare. Did they still do that in high school? No oh, man. Dare. What? They do it in elementary. Or they do elementary it. shit, dude. What yeah, dude. Yeah, where, where was yeah. this that you went to elementary? Uh, I, I remember my fifth grade class we held this year dare concert. Oh, that oh, sounds dude. bad. It was in it was in a basketball stadium. Wow. That sounds really bad. Yeah, uh, and they had like a 14 year old singing and it's like, uh, wow, look at my singing skills. They're like, what's going on? Yeah, in this case, I don't remember anything from mine. Um Yeah. yeah. What is it? What's the acronym stand for? Drug abuse education. So it's not stopping you from using it, it's just stopping you from abusing it? Yeah. Oh, that seems kind of empathetic. But I mean, they make you promise at the end that you do a dare pledge. That you can't do it? You can't you can do drugs. What is this beautiful thing? Is this, oh my god, look at this beautiful thing. Come on up here, gang. Let's have some things to eat. Oh my god, it's so warm. like. We got cinnamon. Come on. Come on, that smell. How can you say no to that smell? It doesn't matter if you're saying I don't want sugar or anything. Thank you. Oh, dude, thank you. And they filled out that evaluation, too. So it's unfortunate that I can't judge you based on uh, that. But let this be the financial reward that you get for a team done early. Like perfect reward for everybody. Break it up, break it up. Corey. I can't. <laughs> you have the longest nail. They're not sharp anymore. Yeah, but they're really bejeweled. Guess who she got it done from? Who? Yeah, it's good. Wow. So what do you pay? Like Snugglebox, or do you pay like do you this kind of price? Or what he does for all? Of I'm sorry, I used that term before. Like I'm just curious. Like how do you charge for that? Because like, that's why he gets. No, so I can't get the three. Now see, this is me as the economist. I don't care what your deals are. I'm just curious. I'm just, right? Because that is technically part of the black market. Uh, it's called the informal market in this case. It's credit, so it's a Okay. Uh, let's deal with number two. Lisa, pizza and burritos are good. Uh, four burritos and four pizzas to bundle of four burritos and five pizzas. Uh, what preference are we violating here? So she's preferring four and four to four and five. <laughs> On which part? So they were saying four P four. It's not the optimal one. Sorry, four burritos to four burritos, four pizzas, four burritos, five pizzas. So what's the problem with this in terms of the preference? Is too high in the different schools? It looks it looks like more is not better. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. More is um, more is always better. The worst, the best thing you could say here. What if the person was like, eh, for pizza, they didn't like it, they didn't dislike it. Then what would they have done? Oh. Indifferent, exactly. It would have been indifferent. So you could have said they are indifferent, but if you strictly say this, then as long as the goods are not bad goods, because obviously if this is a uh, a bad good, um, then you would opt, then this would be true. But one of the assumptions that we make is that the goods that we're dealing with are good goods. That uh, more is always better. So non satiation The only way you would get this to work is if um, <coughs> some learning about green light foods versus red light foods. Apparently, it's like they teach you how to eat well, and apparently, pizza does not rise to 
I mean, like food yeah, yeah, that's food yeah. yeah. that No, they have like a colored plate thing now. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah, so non-satiation is violated here. Um, and that was the change in assumptions that could do this, right? So pizzas would have to be a bad good for this to be true. Otherwise, more is always better. More is always better. Um, I love question number three. We need 17 year olds and 75 year olds going to a concert. I don't know. I, I can't remember the last time I went to a concert. That makes me sound old, but I once went with Kieran McCarthy to, he was working for the Chicago Sun Times, and I was in Chicago working at the Federal Reserve. And he's like, he was right, he was right, he was, the, he was one of the music review people. He was one of my old frat brothers. So we were like living together. I was sleeping on the couch. He had a legit bed. Um, he's like, I got these tickets. Let's go see Jimmy Buffett. Like, I, I didn't know anything about Jimmy. I had no idea. I never listened to his music. I thought his music was annoying. I didn't know anything about the culture of people that like Jimmy Buffett. So I show up in my like jacket and tie, and it's clearly not a jacket and tie kind of scenario. Uh, it's basically like late middle age, primarily men, but some women that are really rough around the edges. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. They got legit jobs, but it's a lot of accountants who are remembering their more fun tasks or maybe not fun tasks. Uh, it's a lot of like HR managers remembering their like former fun tasks uh, and getting really liquored up to do it. Uh, I think people thought I was a narc. I think that's the best description of <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Buffett concert. Okay, uh, yeah, there's tons more. Uh, I got to eat still, but I'm trying to do my job here too, so I want to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what am I sure? Yeah, cinnamon sugar. Yeah, why would I want? Yeah, make sure I have one of these. Don't at least leave one behind for me. Um, but we should eat it all because they're not that good when they're not as warm. Okay. What would this indifference curve look like for food and rock concerts for a 17-year-old? A normal 17-year-old. What would it look like? Would it? So the question is, when I say what would it look like, would it look normal would it look this would it look like this would it look like um that right i mean we need to have a series here then would it look like this or would it look like this instead right so we have lots of different ways to think about it isn't it the case that they want both goods do more of the goods make them happier so the scenario i'm starting to point out here is what is 75 year old like Possibly. Yeah, exactly. But they don't like noisy rock concerts, right? On the other hand, 17 year olds like both those, most of them. Meaning that this part is going to look pretty normal, right? Uh, it's going to be like the kind that we've seen before. Where the indifference curves keep getting further and further from the origin, people like both of these things. What about the 75 year old? So, look like a straight line down. So, one way that it could look, exactly. So, one way it could look would be uh, a straight line where they uh, really don't care how many rock concerts they get, they only care about the food quantity. Um, in this case, they don't mind rock concerts. Rock concerts are not, neither a good good or a bad thing. What if, though, the 75-year-old hated rock concerts? So this is one who doesn't care about rock concerts, and either likes them or dislikes them. What if, what if they dislike rock concerts? What if the 75-year-old dislikes them? Does it look the opposite of the original curve? Like, 
I'm going to go with what you're saying here. Um, so it's almost like this. Even if this is not what you're intending when you were saying outward, I think it's pretty accurate here. Um, that as you get more rock concerts, you have to get more food to offset the badness of the good on the um, on the y axis. So it's just some ways to play around with how with how things are. Um, so the backwards one is if they just like that's if rock out. concerts are a bad fit. If the good on the y axis is a bad fit. And when in what scenario would it be just a horizontal line? Uh, horizontal. Uh, that would be it. Would be horizontal if then the good on the x-axis was the indifferent good. If you were indifferent to the good on the mm -hmm. x-axis. So um, I don't know. Old people don't like spicy food. So if I added a um, a descriptor here and I called it spicy food, then probably old people aren't gonna like spicy food. Um, old people. Um, Okay, this takes care of one through three. Um, <laughs> take a picture now if you want to. Um, I think the camera also captures it, but um, I'm going to erase this. So then we're going to do four. No, I'll make you do four. Some of you have already seen that before. I actually just copied and pasted that from principles. I'm going to make you do four so that I have time to eat, and then I'll have to do five and six for you. Uh, I think that's the way that uh, let's do four. Uh, no, you do four now. Uh, figure it out, and then I will do it. I'm going to you time to eat. Um, you know, Jimmy Buffett. Um, I'm sure it was a good content if you really liked his music. I just find him annoying. Um, although that's not really a I find lots of things annoying in this world. Some guy today driving when I was driving to work. Some tourist was in his convertible, top down, sunglasses on, driving down the age one. That was annoying to me. I don't know if it was his happiness or just his stupidity of driving a, uh, a top down convertible in the, in the middle of the winter. I see, so it's either jealousy on my part, he was pretty happy. I obviously was not, or just the stupidity of tourists. That you know, I feel like it's like they're like, fuck it. Like, I don't care if it's winter here and it's really cold, I'm still gonna put my top down. Mm -hmm. right, you gotta embrace tourists because you know what you're doing last week. This is how you know you're starting to become I'm old, you know, exactly. <laughs> I'm starting to become old and cranky. Yeah, no, oh, dude, like, this is how you know when you're starting to become like you really live here and like the, the you said someone from the mainland, it's cold. Right? Yeah, no, it is cold. It's really cold. I mean, I was wearing a sweatshirt all day today until I found it. Welcome to the white. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, so you're looking at number four. Before. First one with you. I love getting older. It's not that it makes me happier. I actually love getting older. You know, if you make more money, life becomes a lot less stressful because you've already gone through a lot of life already. It's not often that something comes up, approaches me, and I'm like, oh, I've never had to deal with that problem. <laughs> I have to deal with almost everything at least once. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep. So, yeah, basically. You're drawing me a for number four. You're drawing me a series of demand and supply graphs and how they adjust based on the event happening. Well, nothing is more stressful yesterday. I went to my appointment to figure out how to get a mortgage. Oh, that was just stressful. I've never owed money to anyone. It's with the idea of owning money to someone. Yeah. You've talked about this in multiple classes. Huh? I know, but now I actually went to the meeting. I think the woman thought I was poor because <laughs> when I told her my income of my wife and I, she's like, really? And I'm sure she wasn't trying to be rude, but 
Feel a little bit worse about wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, to get a mortgage. Yeah, no, I mean, so the big thing I got to do at this point is so you go meet at the it. bank and they like basically like, how much money do you have? How much money do you make? What's your credit score? So you actually bought your house? Then? No, I haven't bought a house. No, you have to get like pre approved for a mortgage. So, so you're going to, though. Huh? You're going you're going to to go. Go. No, I have to because the university keeps you out after five years. So, of uh, university housing. So. Yeah, figure out something. I've been here now for a year, so. I mean, you got the Corolla. Yeah, I've got my Corolla to live in, yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah, I'm sure she didn't mean to offend, but maybe I need to dress better. That's the only bad thing about being in the bar. Just having the old people in the room. You know what my friend Alex, he's like a freshman in college, and he has like a degree in 2019 Honda Accord. So he owns, on top of that, student loans and car loans. And I was like, dude, what are you doing to yourself? The car probably is expensive as all the loans you've taken out to go to school, isn't it? Yeah. And he goes to Shamanad. I'll be more. I see Shamanad's like really crazy expensive, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, what, why? It's like, you go to LCC, you can like pay like a smile to get successful. Like a smile. Oh. <clears throat> Which for some of you grumpy gusses in this class, it's a high price, but. Who else is happy? Oh my gosh. Never in person. That's stressful. <laughs> Vending machine is been broken. It's actually more sexist than the head get to that walk to the new building. It's working out there. It's not working now. Oh, they work today? It hasn't been working since Friday. Where the heck is Leroy at, man? Hmm? Where's Leroy at? I don't, I don't even know who to call. You never gave me Leroy's number, so. <laughs> Did it really? Did you get it back? No. It's good. It's like right in the C building. You can talk to the C building. Oh, I guess that's around. Yeah. It's like in the first floor thing. I'm going to go there and I'm going to impersonate you. That's <laughs> <laughs> my $5. Um, they ask me, what do I drive? And I'll say, in Subaru. So, this question is all about comparative status. And what we're seeing here is that if abacuses and calculators are substitutes for each other, uh, what should we see here for number four, letter A? Shift to the Shift to the Yeah, so if this is for calculators and the abacuses themselves increase, then people are going to buy more calculators because the alternative good is more expensive. So what we see here is that this shifts out because in the abacus market, abacus being the old fashioned way of adding things, uh, if the price is going up, then the quantity demanded is falling, but people are now just replacing their purchases of abacuses with calculators. Um, which would mean that then we could make a prediction that in that market that the price is going up. And obviously that the point is going up as well. Now with uh, letter B with the pocket protectors, same market calculator. In the pocket protector market that the Price of P squared is going up. Same thing here. Quantity demanded will fall. But now what's happening? Correct. Because now we're saying 
calculators are the intimate relationship to pocket protectors. If pocket protectors aren't there, no one's going to buy a calculator without a pocket protector. So this would be um, where the letter A is um, illustrating to us um, substitute relationships. Letter B is our complement relationship. I'm so cute. I thought pocket protectors were were for pens. Yeah, they are, but usually the same people who buy the one. Um, I actually do not own a pocket protector for those who are wondering. I did have one once. I never wore it or used it. Uh, I am notorious for leaving stuff in my pockets though when I do my wash. Uh, not that she doesn't do my wash. I'm saying I do my wash either usually before her she does hers, and then I'm the one that's like, why are all these Ricola like cough drops in the washing machine? Sometimes there's like a dollar sometimes. Um, I don't know. It just seems like a waste of time to have to go check your pockets. Um, do you leave stuff in your pockets? All the time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's super nice for us, no one yells at you, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, increase in the price of plastic. So, what's going on now for this? <clears throat> Supply shifts, but does what increase or decrease? Uh, Correct. Yep. So, basically, we're going through these kinds of steps. I am giving you the event. That's what I'm giving you in each of these problems. You're having to say, what is affected? Is it the supply or demand, right? That's kind of basically the first thing you're doing here is what's being affected, supply or demand. Then you're having to say, is it a movement or a shift of the curve? A movement of the curve would be only changing the price of the good itself. Otherwise, it would shift. Um, and then you're basically saying, is it an increase or decrease? So this is basically the four steps that you're following um, as you're doing um, each of these. Um, so here, when the cost of plastic goes up, then the firm, basically the entire cost is going to reduce um, how much they're producing at each and every price or a decrease um, in supply. Um, D is the opposite, so I'm not even going to ask you. Um, but now it's just basically, <clears throat> if some technology comes out that allows me to make these uh, calculators cheaper, then obviously that shifts out my supply curve. So th this is reason why, for instance, why does big business hate giving people health care? This is a perfect example of a description of why, right? Because if they didn't have to give employees health care, then it would be cheaper to have employees, right? Quite simply, right? Um, especially in Hawaii, right? Hawaii is notorious because we have, in the US, we have the strictest laws for um, employers having to cover our health insurance. I mean, nowhere else in the country, um, are the laws as strict as in Hawaii, meaning uh, I would venture to guess that for any of your parents or for yourself, you're probably not paying more than a few hundred dollars or anything at all for your health insurance. Whereas on the mainland, people pay like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars even for their employers' coverage. Um, right. So the law in Hawaii that requires employers to more heavily subsidize it, and what that means is, dude. That's why employers don't want to hire as many workers in Hawaii as right, what they can maybe do on the mainland or some other country, right? Where they don't even have to pay any health care um, costs. So how it decreases it out. Uh, let's look at I'm worried about this whole law coming out about how straws are going to be outlawed. Well, I'm really, really worried yes. about that one. I like straws. Me too. What turtles? Are they eating them or like? No, it's getting stuck in the nose. Well, that makes sense. So they can't degrade. They can't make degradable ones. Yeah. No, they do have the paper ones. Yeah, the paper ones. 
I've never used so like a paper like we're it's, talking it's like, like a, it's like a it's like a kind of like a like a cardboard. rigid paper or <laughs> kind of like a cardboard straw. So by the time you're finished drinking, it's gonna be so disgusting. But what if I take a long time to drink my drink? Then That's the problem. You don't yeah. have a straw, pretty much. Just get a metal it's straw. Kind of laugh. Let's try get metal. Well, how are they ending up in the ocean with the turtles? Because yeah. people are stupid. Landfills, I guess. Well, yeah. Whenever you go behind a dump truck or garbage truck on the H1, it's always yeah. trash. Mm -hmm. Metal ones aren't that bad. Like maybe two dollars. I think he already did his mark on this. Everybody else had like a rice one with it, where this guy like made one out of rice. They probably could. And you could eat it afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 A Trader Joe's has like the purple baton. Yeah. You can put in like milk and they mostly last you. Like, you can drink them probably to the whole glass if they're. Like, you're no, maybe I'm just used to not using a straw. Or I can bring my own, right? They make those like reusable straws. Yeah, so the metal ones are like too much. Well, where am I going to stick that? Where am I going to stick a straw? Like in my pocket all the time? <laughs> just, just, get, just get a couple of them and then make them in places that you use them most of the time. So, like in your car. And most places are more than willing to wash them. You'd be surprised. No. No. Well, neither of our cars have cup holders. Yours is notorious, right? Because it's right by the car stereo. It's like right in front of it on your car. I know mine broke too. And mine and the Corolla, they made the Corolla without a cup holder. So why would you make a car without a cup holder? No one can drink. Man, I don't want you drinking in there, yeah. <clears throat> so, and, right? It's a Japanese car. Well, Japanese constructed American car. Yeah, we just don't want us drinking in our cars. Yeah, it's the same. That's what Japan's giving us, right? Don't drink in your car. Why can't I drink in my car? You get the train. What? Get the train. Can I drink on the train? Well, like this. Drink on the train. Just get a free one. Or do you have to get glass? I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think you can drink on the train. You just get scared for it. In the Midwest, you can get blasted on the train. <laughs> really? Yeah, so like, so I used to live in Chicago, worked at the Federal Reserve Bank. It was, you could not drink beer before 5 p.m., but 5 p.m. onwards, you could like get loaded, like when, because you basically everyone works in the city and then lives, you know, out in the suburbs. And you take this train, the train takes you all the way out to the suburbs. But it's like an hour long ride. So people didn't get like, blasted drunk in that hour and then go in their car and drive home. Which probably is not a good combination, but that's you know. it, it worries me that seventy five percent of these spots were drug stories. I know exactly. I don't know what's going. On. Again, it's because of the lecture I was preparing. I, I like call it the man in the high castle like phenomenon. That's what I call it, the man in the high castle phenomenon. Um, calculators increasing your intelligence. Um, let me see today's man drinks it away. Uh, yes. Let's just go with that. Yep. So um, this would be reveal uh, higher <coughs> preferences towards the thing. So right, the opposite would. Uh, I could get this going if I said, "Dude, public school make you stupider." Then this would be the demand curve for private school, right? So that's like the common notion of this for Hawaii, right? Is that private schools are gonna like on the one side they'll say, "Oh, dude, every school is great, even the public schools, right?" But then right private conversations and dude, the public schools suck. They don't have enough money to do anything. As a way to encourage people to right to go there and do um, their thing. Uh, math convention uh, coming to town. Uh, people lost their calculators and had to replace them. And then there was a fire at the factory. So now we got two things going on. So the reason why. And then high school stuff we don't know about how to do. Exactly right. So this is then the exciting part is then so. Demand is, um, in this case, is going up because of this large replacement schedule of the lost calculators. But then supply is falling because of the fire. Um, so when faced like, with something like this again, I'm hoping this is going to review, but it's going to be the review slowly. The best thing to do here is shift them by the same magnitude. Because then you can determine which variable you don't know about how it's changing. Because the way that this works is that when there are two very when two curves are changing at the same time, one one of the prices or quantity is changing in an ambiguous fashion, and the other is changing in an unambiguous fashion. 
meaning um, one is changing where you, you need more information to know what's happening, and the other one you know a certainty what's happening. Remember, I'm trying to determine two things price and quantity. How is the price and quantity changing? Whether this had changed a little or a lot, it was always the case that the price was going up and that the quantity was going up. Here you don't know because uh, demand is increasing. So if I change these by about the same amount, you can see with certainty that the price is going up, but the quantity kind of stayed the same. But to review for us here, what if I then did the same event and it turns out that the fire was small, but a lot of people needed that new calculator. All right, so now if I start adding the descriptors of the events, small fire, lots of people lost their calculator. Now, same result for the price about how the price is changing. So here's my old equilibrium, here's my new. Equilibrium price is still going up, but now um, my quantity is going up as well. Or alternatively, <clears throat> small change in demand, huge fire. I think that's because same increase here and then now a decrease. I think that's because they're here. Yeah, probably. Oh, right now I'm watching a Netflix documentary about the Fire Festival. Anyone see this one? Okay. Yeah. So this is like a bunch of like uh, bad people that created a like I don't know what you would call it like a yeah it's like a Coachella I guess basically yeah um, I was gonna say Coachella but then I was like but the people doing it weren't that great it was like Blink One Eighty Two wait did Blink One Eighty Two wait did he show up or not show up? No, they were the first ones to cancel. Mm -hmm. That's good. Blink One Eighty Two they've been around forever that would. You're not playing on new stuff, are they anymore? I don't think so. I don't know. Where was where was the festival supposed to be? It's supposed to be like well, that's part of the controversy now. You have Netflix, you should totally watch it. So they couldn't find an island to do it. So then they ended up like what, like taking like a small part by like a sandals like resort, like a small part of like a huge area off to the side of it. But it's basically supposed to be like the people that eat avocado toast kind of style, right? Like rich people. Um, going to another island to in the Caribbean to like, you know, feel like they're at Coachella, but not you know, different kind of events, I guess. I don't know. But they all got stuck there. Uh, so I'm at the point where they don't have enough housing and people are about to arrive. That's where I'm at. And then I have to come to class. So um, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, Menina. Or sorry, G. Um, so again, the ambiguous variable here is the quantity because I created three scenarios where we didn't know how it was changing, but price was always going up. So price here would be the unambiguous variable. Um, in G, yeah, so in G, everyone's, so yeah, so the demand curve now is going to shift to the right because the government's replacing its calculators. Again, two things happening here, so I'm going to shift them by the same amount. Now the government is going to subsidize calculator factories being made. Subsidies tend to increase the supply curve. And again, if you've done it right, and I shifted them by the same amount, what we're going to see here is that now I've made price my ambiguous variable rather than my quantity. Uh, I could draw the other three scenarios, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to do the others, unless you really wanted to. Um, for any, um, well, but in the interest of like accuracy, I think prices will be going down. Um, most likely, yeah, because it's probably going to be a government thing, I guess. Um, when I first one, the government is going to be in that period. Right, so then the, if you're picking the units from the second one, um, government 
by the major factories means that not only are they boosting like production, so yeah, like what makes the calculator has increased. And how do you? I mean, see, the thing is, too, is that you don't typically make a you don't have a factory devoted to producing a single product in a just-in-time society um, production process. You wouldn't you'd split it all up. Anyway, the key point to this is for um, uh, for F and G that you see that there are multiple scenarios when you answer this in with bulk that both supply shifted as well as demand shifted. Again, I'm hoping this is somewhat review, but even if you're looking at this, you're like, dude, it's been a long time. Um, again, this is being recorded. This is under the general topic called comparative statics. So if you have to like look up stuff on the web when you're doing an exam or something like that, again, this is called comparative statics. So that would be the key term to Google and do your thing. Now, again, when we get to the exam time, I am fully embracive of if you start the exam early enough, like I'll give you two weeks notice. If you start the exam and let's say we're a week into that process and the exam is due a week from now, you can say, dude, Shining, I got through like half the exam. I'm kind of stuck on this, 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 and this. Can I come to your office and like, can you help me give me a few tips? Happy to do it. Um, you don't even have to come to my office. If you write up like a document and you explain to me specifically where is it that you're getting stuck. I will help you get through that. The only way I can't do it is if you do it like night before it's due. I mean, I'll try. I'm, I will happily try to help you, but dude, my wife will kill me if I'm not home at a certain time. So like, I care less about you learning at that point than me surviving the day. So <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm sure she's fine. Uh, hopefully, uh, but still. Um, and then real quick, what do you think? Yeah. Which one is the one that doesn't change? Um, no, the ambiguous one is the one where we need a descriptor term to know how much they are shifting by. And the way that you identify what's the ambiguous here, so it's either price or quantity, the way that you identify that is shift them by the same amount. Because when you shift them by the same amount, it's the one that will show no change at all. So you'll see that, for, again, for both of these, when I shift them by the same amount, okay, I already know now quantity is my ambiguous variable. Or here, I already know that price is my ambiguous variable. If you look at the, I think it's the Wikipedia entry for comparative statics, it gives you a pretty helpful table of like what's ambiguous or not based on which curve that you should them. But again, the term I'm using here, again, you have to look it up, is called comparative statics. Sorry, could you repeat that the unambiguous variable has no change? So, um, no. So, well, yes, yeah, sort of. Um, when you know that both, so let's say you get to step two here and you say both supply is affected and demand is affected by the events that you gave. Calculator fire, everyone's replacing it. Okay, so then you're, and we know that they're shifting. So then, right, we identified how they're shifting. What we need to do is we need to identify um, which variable, quantity or price, which one is moving in what direction. And what you know is that when both curves are shifting, you know one with just very basic information, you know the direction that one of the variables will change with certainty. That's your unambiguous variable. So in all three of these scenarios, the price went up. So there's no way I could construct a scenario where both where these events are happening where the price doesn't go up. So it's unambiguous because whether I say it's a small fire, big fire, lots replaced, few replaced, it'll always be the price is going up. The quantity though is my ambiguous variable requiring the descriptor of the magnitude of the event, big fire, small fire, because Right, uh, big fire, small fire. Now, the only way that, so right, so if you're starting this and you don't know which is which without drawing all of them, that's why I then suggest change them by the same amount. Because if you change it by the same amount, the one that does not change is your ambiguous variable. Or you can just draw it all for you. Um, but in this case, where I don't say how big the fire is or how big the replacement is, you have to draw all three and state then that 
that the quantity is ambiguous and that the price is ambiguous. It's, if this seems confusing, you can already see that this is confusing to you. Um, if someone sends me a message, I made a YouTube video um, where I solve a few problems like this. Uh, I, I usually, um, um, in the principles class, they have a standalone video that does this. Um, I'm not going to make you subscribe to my YouTube channel to get it. Uh, if you want it, I'll send you the link and you can just watch it that way. Um, you still have my same um, uh, cartoon voice doing the description. And I basically write it. So I have this, your tuition dollars paid for me to have this like special paper where I basically use a special pen and I write out the lecture and record my voice while I'm writing it out. Um, might as well as the tuition dollars at work. So. Were you posting those videos from like the first class? So, so I've been posting them. Um, oh, I thought it was in 130. Uh, so this is actually better than it was in 130. So every lecture now is being recorded. So that thing is recording the whole three hour lecture. And then I post it to YouTube and then I post the link to Lalima. But again, with the comparative statics thing, like the ones that we had in principles, the ones where I'm like drawing something out and doing that whole thing. If you want those, I can easily repost those. You said the point would you want me to repost. I just don't want to post them all. So, like again, if it's been a while since you had comparative statics, that's an easy one where I can just post it. It's like a 10 minute, you probably watched before, or it's a 10 minute video and you would have it there to watch. Yeah, because I watched all the videos from 130. I wasn't sure if you're going to repost Oh, repost all those? Yeah, because I know you were talking a lot about that. Um, so far, yes. So yeah, with the review supply and demand, I would agree with that, but very quickly, especially today, it won't be, but I guess I could see how it might be. I can see how it might be helpful. Um, yeah, you know what, if someone sends me a reminder, I'll create a, a general kind of like folder that will say review of old stuff, and I'll just post a bunch of YouTube links on there. If someone sends me a message, otherwise um, I will not remember. Uh, but the unfortunate thing would be is that let's go to number five because something like number five will not be on there because um, we um, we have enough information at least of how to do A and C hopefully uh, maybe not as much B but let's do A and C and then I really want to get to six. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I was kind of feeling like, oh, that's what happened to me this weekend. Did anyone watch the award shows for movies on Sunday? It was like this award show. Uh, it was, they're called the SAG Awards, which are the Screen and Actors Guild. It made me really jealous. Like, it was basically like actors saying to other actors, you're the best at this, or you're the great. So, it's like your colleagues saying you're the best at something. And it's sponsored by the, the Screen and Actors Guild, which is the union for actors and actresses. Which made me feel bad about my union. My union doesn't do anything like that. Um, I mean, I'd like that, like, best econ lecture for elasticities goes to, <laughs> right? And go up, right? It'd be like between me and Ryan Reynolds, and I'd win it. And my union well, doesn't do anything like that. that. So. You know, my union does no, it's not. I feel like an old man. What do you want to do? I'm not going to get into this. I'm really stupid, though. I'm setting it up. Uh, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to complain about my union. If I start doing that, then all hell breaks loose. Um, Okay, how will I solve this if I'm looking for equilibrium? Let's me equal to each other. If you don't remember from principles or you had it so long ago, you don't remember, or your person didn't even do it for you, which is possible as well. This is equilibrium, right? It means the point where demand meets supply. So that's kind of the mathematical reason why we are doing this, is that I'm setting both equations equal to each other. <laughs> so 
Uh, someone want to tell me what the uh, I guess I have. I should say. Let me tell you what I got, and you can confirm with me. You know, just what you got. Um, I got p equals four. Yeah. So eleven sixty equals two ninety p. Divide each side by two ninety. So that p equals four. And then substitute, yep, yep, then substitute the price into either equation to get quantity. I got 1100. So first solve for price, then substitute it into either equation. You should get approximately the same number. In this case, you should get the exact same number. If it's decimal, sometimes you'll get slight differences, but don't worry about it. It's close enough. So set the equations equal to each other. That's step one. Step two would be solve for p, solve for price. And then step three would be substitute that price into either equation. I would suggest substituting it in both because if they're wildly different, then you know you made an asset or something. As I tell people in principles, and I think that still applies here, if you make an error, a math error, and I think this is what you did wrong, uh, you won't lose any points for it. This is a as much as I like perfection in math and there's beauty in math, um, <clears throat> you are not the same as me. So I shouldn't get too much. Um, okay, so now we've identified what the equilibrium price and quantity is. If this is four and this is 1100, I find it helpful to choose and draw a picture here at this point to see what we've got going on. Um, let's skip. B for right now. Um, let's get the, but let's just jump to C. Um, um, a four dollar and fifty cent uh, bushel price uh, for this coin. So what does that do? So that means then that the government is insuring. In this case, what does it say? Price floor or price ceiling? Price floor. Yep. Price floor. So the government is making it a requirement that. The price has to be higher, um, has to be at least four dollars and fifty cents. Uh, to remind you, price floors are things like the minimum wage. The minimum wage is a um, price floor because you can go no lower than the floor, right? The law says, in this case, an employee in Hawaii has to get paid at least ten ten an hour, right? So it's the at least part to it that makes it a floor. Again, think of it like a house because this might seem opposite to you, right? That the floor should have been below, not above. But again, think of it as a floor says, uses the term at least as part of the law. And if you think about it in terms of the house, you can't go any lower than the floor. The floor is the lowest you can go. If I were to, and I'll erase this very shortly here, but if I put it right here, if I put the price floor below, it would make no sense at all. So I would be saying, right, an if, let's say these were wages instead, that an employee has to get paid at least $1 an hour. It's not gonna matter, right? Because already the equilibrium is four. It would be the equivalent of a law saying you have to pay at least 50 cents for a gallon of gas. The price is already higher than that. So a price floor below it, you can pass a law. I mean, there's nothing, to stop you from doing that, but the law is pointless. There's no purpose to that law because the price already is going to exceed it. Uh, but we need to solve what the um, we need to solve what the disequilibrium amount is. How am I going to get that? Uh, you're just going to plug in 4.5 as p in both equations. Exactly. Or subtract it with both quantities. Yep. So quantities made here now will be 1600 minus 125 times 4.5. I got. 1037.5. You can correct me if I'm wrong here. When I supplied, I got 440 plus 165 times 4.5. I got 1182.5. So we have a surplus here of 145. Yeah. And that the total cost of this would be what? 652.5. <laughs> this amount being found is the difference between these two. If things start seeming confusing to you, this is where the picture helps because you can start 
putting down these points here, right? So this one would be my 1037.5. This would be my 1182.5. And that basically I'm trying to measure this difference, which is 145. And in terms of the cost, the cost here then is the 450 times the 145. Get you that Question. So this is, I'm hoping it's somewhat review, but it might be somewhat new because you might not have gone into that kind of detail. Yeah. Uh, so I just, I'm just trying to remember, uh, is this the situation where the deadweight loss? There is. There would be a deadweight. There absolutely would be a deadweight loss, and we could actually take steps to find it. If you do that, you just multiply one point five with fifty cents. That's the nope. That's nope. The so what you have to do then is you have to take that quantity, uh, substitute it into the supply function to find what that price is. Then you do one half that difference times this difference. I'm not going to make you do that, but you can obviously do some um, geometry here and you solve for the dead weight loss. To remind everyone, and you don't think you need to take notes on this, I'm not going to ask you about it, but the dead weight loss is important because that really is what economists care about when we're talking about something like a minimum wage. Um, a dead weight loss for a minimum wage represents the fact that there are people who would have been willing to work for 10 10 an hour but it's illegal to hire them to do work for less than 10 10 an hour but they were willing to do the job for less than 10 10 an hour. so this is the thing i'm trying to work through right now as i prepare my lecture for thursday right this idea of, again of the illegal market right like what stops me from saying dude great you look like you're good on kids i'm going to pay you five dollars an hour to watch my kids right I mean, who's getting the bad end of the deal here, right? You could say that Brent's getting the bad end of the deal. My kid's like, you know, so five bucks is pretty cheap, right? Plus, what if my kid like gnaw off his finger, right? He doesn't have workman's comp or anything like that, right? So you could say I'm taking advantage of it, but the other side of it would be, dude, he's looking for work, right? And he loves kids, and he doesn't have a degree to like or certification to watch kids. So, right, if I'm willing to pay him five bucks an hour to do the job, and he's willing to do the job. Who's screwing who, right? I mean, right in this case, it doesn't seem that harmful yet. Maybe it is, right? I mean, that's so when we think of you don't have to take notes on this, but when we think of like the excitement of like black market illegal things, it's not always that exciting, right? I mean, then it kind of becomes almost an ethical question of like, right, am I exploiting Brent or am I offering him an opportunity, right? Some would say, right, and this is actually what some say is, dude, 10 10 an hour in Hawaii? You can't live on 10 10 an hour in Hawaii. You really can't. But again, you know, if we raise the minimum wage to 15, you know that fewer people will be employed. So now you've got someone who's willing to do the job at 12, and now there's another job. How do you have the total cost? Hmm? The total, cost. Uh, total cost. So the total cost is determined by the $4.50 support price times the difference of what was not bought, uh, 145. So 145 times 4.5 should give you the 652.5, I think. Yeah. Let's do the more exciting one now. Let's, you, none of you, I don't think, would have done number six. So number six should be new to everybody, um, I'm hoping. If not, this whole discussion is. So we have a utility function here of 0.3x squared y cubed. Um, and I want to know what is the marginal rate of substitution um, So remember that for this utility function, the MRS the marginal rate of substitution is the slope of this indifference curve. And it's equal to the marginal utility of the good on the x axis over the marginal utility of the good on the y axis. So uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of basic math here, basic calculus to solve this. I'm not assuming that anyone loves calculus in this class. I will do the work for you here, but I promise you I'll do it so that it's easy to understand. 
again, I'm well aware that um, calculus is not a prerequisite for this course. So what we need to do is what we would call in calculus terms first order partial differentials here, meaning I need to take the first derivative. Um, so for those of you who had, remember we did this a little bit in um, intermediate macro as well, um, doing number four, labor and capital stocks. Um, did I do it or did you want to do it? Oh, no, you don't. You don't want it? Okay. I can do it. So we'll do it. Oh, yeah. We'll do it, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use the power rule here. So, what the power rule basically says is that I'm going to take what's in the exponent for that relevant variable and move it to the front here. And then I subtract one from that exponent. So, basically, I'm going to have two times 0.3x. I'm going to write it out like this just so it's like really clear what's happened here, right? Is that the two move to the front, then you have to subtract one from that exponent that used to be there. And then the y cube, nothing changes because it's a partial differential, meaning it doesn't matter what happened to y. I only care what happened to x, right? Because it's the mux that I'm looking at here. Um, which basically leaves me with 0.6 xy cubed. When we do it for, this is an x, by the way. When we do it for muy, now the three is going to go in the front. Notice nothing's happening to um, right, our whole term here. The x squared is now not being adjusted because it's this is a first order partial. But now you can see that if I put these, if I put this as a ratio, I can start to cross things out. So MRS now equals 0.6 xy cubed over 0.9 x squared y squared. Um, x over x, so um, let's, let's obviously a negative, equals, so 0.6 over 0.9 is basically two thirds x over x squared. So when we're dividing this, we subtract things. So basically x2 minus one leaves me with an x in the um, denominator and I'm left with a y in the numerator. Um, I, I, just to, because I know not everyone writes now, so I'm aware of that. Um, what I'm doing here for the x's, so when it's x over x squared, basically think of that as x1 over x2. And when things are divided, you subtract the powers, the exponents, meaning x1 minus 2, which is x to the negative first, which is the same as x being in the denominator. When something is to the negative first, it goes into the denominator. Don't worry, like again, if, if you get to the exam, again, people just again identified early. If this is all like really freaking you out right now, this would be where you identify it early and say, do it in two weeks, uh, two weeks to see shredded, right? And you figure it out. Or let's say you didn't do what you were supposed to do, then you walk me through how you would solve it as if you knew how to do the math and you get full points if your explanation of how to solve the problem is correct. That's all I care about. So what, let's look at what we're done here. I gave you a utility function, 0.3x squared y cubed. And I said to you, solve for me what the marginal rate of substitution is the slope of the indifference curve. So basically what I did first is I did a first order partial differential. First order partial differential. First order meaning, you notice here I always did like the minus one. I just did it for the first order of things changing. I'm not looking at the magnitude of the change, right? I'm not taking the um, the magnitude of the change where I would do like a second order. This is just the first order. How are things changing in general? So, um, but it's also a partial differential, meaning I'm looking at the equation first as if x is only changing. Then I'm looking at the equation as only y is changing. 
And then as you move to the middle panel there, then all that I did is I just started simplifying it. And I simplified it so that my marginal rate of substitution quite simply looked like this, negative 2y over 3x. Now, um, the price ratio I give you here is that soft drinks, um, let's call soft drinks here, um, let's make soft drinks are, uh, let's see here, let's make X here, chips. Let's make Y be our soft drinks. Um, so price of X here is going to be 50, 25 cents. Price of soft drinks is 50 cents. That's just from the problem. But the reason why I'm doing that is why. That's going to be the slope of Y. What is the price ratio going to be? Y. Slope of my. Starts with a B. I think I have a question. Budget constraint. Okay. What's the um what's it gonna be the slope of the price ratio? Because we're trying to find that one magical point where the two are equal. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to set my two equal circle things together, equal to each other. So this right here. This right here is the slope of my difference. Would everyone agree with that, or does me writing that seem utterly confusing? If it does, just raise your hand. You don't even need to say why it seems confusing. You just need to raise your hand and say it. You need to say it. You just need to raise your hand. Is it obvious that that is the slope of the difference curve? The ratio of the marginal utilities. MUX over MUY. Marginal utility is either on the x axis or the marginal utility is on the y axis. Then, from the information I gave you in the problem, this is my slope of my budget constraint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be negative. You're right. Yep. Uh, because of its downward slope. Yep. <laughs> So step one was basically solving this. Step two was really easy. Um, and finding the price ratio, which now leads me to step three, which is setting the two slopes equal to each other. Uh, cross multiply. Okay. Or solve the other way. Okay. Now what that does for us in step three is it now tells us what the, when we're trying to determine, because remember what we're trying to do here, we're trying to figure out how much of that is and how much of that is based on whether I can afford it or not and whether I want it or not. And what I've done now up to this point in step three is I found that basically for every X, there should be one and one third more Y's than X's, whatever the answer ends up being. Or seen another way, right? Same difference here would be for every Y, 
there should be three fourths as many x's. So basically now I know what the ratio is, but what this does for me is I can put it back into my original equation and get rid of one of the unknowns, which then makes it a solvable problem. Because right? right now I have two unknowns and I can't solve this. So um, I'm already here just so that, because I'm, I'm imagining you're gonna to get to a point where you're gonna take a picture of this or, or some, or the creepy um, Hunger Games. Um, but step four, would then be with these optimal ratios. Now what I'm going to do is let's just do it with that. Just, I'm just going to pick that. I don't have to pick that. I just pick that first for whatever reason. Uh, four thirds one. Okay. So now I can start to solve out um, what that's going to look like here. Um, in this case, I give the person $5 a week. So basically, step one and two is your answer for letter A. Step one and two is your answer for letter A on this worksheet. Step three is your answer for letter B. Step three is your answer for letter B. And now for letter C, that's my step four that I'm working on right here. Is a $5 budget. Then I'm going to substitute y. Y here is 3 plus x, so 0.5 is 0.75. x plus 0.25. x equals 5. 5 equals, if I did my math correctly, never expected 0.25 x plus 0.25. 375x5 equals 0.625x Okay, so what I did here, um, there's two ways I could have done this. Um, and I was trying to put out both ways so that you could see a more general way of understanding this problem. But basically, I want to do a substitution. The one way you could have done the substitution would have been I'm trying to achieve a certain utility number. How can I, what number of X and Y do I need? So instead of saying you have a $5 budget, I could have said you want 100 units of utility. Then it would have been 100, this, and then I would have solved it and did my division. In this way, I did it the other way. So that's why I put the or here, which would be $5 budget. Then I have my X goods that I could buy plus my Y goods that I could buy. The equation then is the 25 cent price that I gave you in the problem, the 50 cent price I gave you in the problem, x and y. Again, problem with this is you've got too many unknowns. You can't solve it, right? The two unknowns. Here. I need to get rid of one of my un one unknowns by taking my answer from step three and doing substitution. I didn't have to do it this way. I could have solved for y first. I just picked x, but you could have solved for y first. There's no Whatever you want to do, it just seems easier to do three plus instead of four plus. But 0.25x then plus 0.5. So I'm going to substitute that y for three fourths x or 0.75 just to get rid of the factors. Then um, 0.5 times 0.75 is 0.375. Well, if you do that math, 0.5 times 0.75, this should be 0.375. And I'm going to add to that 0.25. That total then is 0.625. And then if I divide 5 by 0.625, I got 8. Then you need to solve the y. 
y is equal to 3 fourths times 8, which gives me y equals um, 6. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I know, again, I, you, I'm not expecting any of the seniors in principle, but what this does is it adds a little bit of a mathematical context to what we would have done, what we did last week and what we would have done in terms of this. Uh, again, trying to understand a scenario where basically now we know that this is eight and this is six for this $5 budget line. That's what the answers tell us. Uh, after I do this quick explanation though, then we're on break. But I just want to do an explanation just because now we see this, we see the answer to the problem. Using the board here, I just want to walk you through how I'm doing it. If you want to take, I mean, the creepy camera is doing the thing. But if you want to use your phone to like record me explaining this really fast, that's totally fine. Or if you just want to listen, whatever you want to do. Um, we started out with this problem right here. That was the problem I gave you. Um, and what we're basically trying to find here is what is the marginal rate of substitution first? So to solve the marginal rate of substitution, I need to find both marginal utilities. To find both marginal utilities, I separate them out here. So I do MUX and MUY. Now, what that requires me to do is again, our first order partial differential. In, in formal calculus terms, that's what we're doing. But you don't need to worry about that. I'm just gonna use the simple power rule here. And I'm basically gonna say for MUX, I'm gonna take whatever's in the exponents for the X, use the power rule, which means take that um, number, put it in the front of the equation, and then take the power and subtract one, in first order. So that two jumps to the front, two <clears throat> times the original point three, taking the X term, but now it's two minus one, because I put the two in front. Y cubed, the Y is unaffected because that's not part of this um, first order partial. Now I'm just doing math. 2 times 0.3 is 0.6. X to the first, I mean, I could add this here if that makes you happier, but 2 minus 1 is obviously 1. That would be X to the first. You don't have to write the 1 if you don't want to. It's presumed that it's 2 to the first. And then the Y cube just carries down. There's nothing more I can do with it at that point. Now I do the same step repeated for MUY. 3 goes in the front, 0.3. X, the 2 stays the same, X squared. But now it's Y cubed minus 1, which makes it Y squared. Okay. That's fine because now what that does is it creates this. I made life a little easier by simplifying it. You don't have to. I mean, you could keep it really messy, but your life will be harder if you don't. Um, but right, I just you do each thing one by one. Um, 0.6 over 0.9 is two thirds. X over x squared, as I pointed out here, is x in the denominator. Y cubed over y squared leaves you with a y in the numerator. Okay, that's my MRS. Now, I need to set that equal then to my price ratio. 25 cents, 50 cents. Which then gave me these optimal ratios after I cross multiply. And the reason why you do this is so that when you get over here to step four, I can then take one of two equations, depending on the information I give you, Either I'm going to say, this is the utility level I want. What's the cheapest way to get that utility level? The other side of it, which is what I'm changing here is, um, here's my budget. What's the maximum utility I can get from that budget? So it's either, it's either me trying to be as happy as I can with the funds that I have, or alternatively is, How cheap can I get it to make me that happy? 
right? Either I'll either tell you, you'll either use one equation or the other. Either it will be set up like it is in letter C, where I say, I got five bucks. What's the happiest I could get for five bucks? Or I want to be this happy. What's the cheapest way to get that happy? It's two sides of the same coin, right? I mean, it doesn't matter which one you do here. Uh, basically, and then take my answer from step three and I substitute it in. I didn't have to do this one, I could have done the other one, doesn't matter. Um, but then I solve this, and then I take that eight, substitute it in, and get six. Okay. Okay. Take a break, everybody. We all deserve it. Uh, I will pick it up from here. Uh, I don't know, I think it's time to eat some masalas. Uh, what time is it? Oh, I am so consistent. Hey, look, out a watch. Yeah, it's usually 640, 640. Okay, so 640, let's take a break till 650 and then uh, we'll wrap up slides. Okay. Mm. So I have some malsadas here. Looks like uh, it's actually pretty even there, huh? Like cinnamon, they're still as popular. Oh no, they were more regular, weren't they? I like cinnamon. I like cinnamon. Yeah, so we have, I know, because like it's not like you get but then there's a similar challenge. So what are people oh. doing? Like snorting and dying? No, like, no, they're, they're eating it. Okay, let's go. Eating yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. They're eating it and dying. Can, I don't think your body can digest it. Why not? It's, it's something it, about the yeah. powder goes into your lungs yeah. and affects your lungs. So would it work with any part? Like what if I did pepper? <laughs> that will just make you... That makes you sneeze. Yeah, it's Specifically true. something that's on you. But why is it that pepper makes us sneeze? There's probably got to be a, a reason for it, right? Have you ever had cinnamon sugar on pancakes? On what? Pancakes. Put what on pancakes? Cinnamon sugar. sugar. I, like I don't sugar. know. I like my pancakes with no, nothing on it at all. I just like a straight yeah, pancake. It's so cold. No butter, pancakes. nothing? No, no butter, nothing. Really? Straight wow. pancakes. Oh, because then I can like curl it up and eat it like a little... Um, you can still do that with stuff on it. Yeah, that's true, but it's messier. And I like the idea that I could be watching TV, eating it like I'm eating like a cigar or something. <laughs> yeah. You should try it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So what kind of hours then does your boyfriend have to work at? Like what kind of what time do people need that kind of stuff? Like where is it just all day long? It's all day long. I mean it's dead season. Yeah. What? It's dead season right now for all stores. Why is it dead season? It's like, tax season. Like mm -hmm. so no one's really buying anything or shopping. Yeah. So he like works from nine, maybe nine or nine thirty to like eight. Hmm. And that's dead season? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have like, an appointment the whole day. Okay. So he does like walk-ins and stuff. But mm -hmm. okay. Usually they have surgical appointments, but they cancel. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. You should pick up Frank on TV. Yeah, I bet. I'll give you his card. I'll give you the uh, card. How much does he charge? Um, it's like, how many want? I mean, the basic, like the stuff I have, the mm -hmm. stuff, you like go and go to the like thirty five dollars. I mean, my wife used to do it before while she was in college, mm -hmm. and like, um, yeah, she used to do it while she was in college to make some money. Well, like but she did nails, but now she doesn't have enough time where she doesn't want to do it herself anymore. You want a business card? No, my wife goes to that place at L1. I don't know. She's some like fellow VN people that she knows and talks to, and. Um, so it's the basement of the Al Moana thing. I mean, everything beats what I do. Did you know? No, I sell dangerous meds for me. I know, Franco. Yeah, no, I talked about that. I did you're like I say every semester I meet someone who does Cutco. So that made me say that if there was the apocalypse, dude, the parking lot's gotta have at least three cars full of knives. Are there knives in your car right now? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. See? Apocalypse comes, let's all run to your car. Find the red Pontiac, right? The red Pontiac? The white Pontiac. White Pontiac. There can't be that many Pontiacs. I mean, dude, this is Hawaii. I mean, if it was the mainland, there'd be Pontiacs everywhere, but here in Hawaii, it's pretty rare to see a Pontiac driving around somewhere. Yeah. What is, what is Cutco? It's basically kitchen knives. 
but door to door. Oh. Imagine a guy showing up at your house with knives. big thing of knives and say, I mean, is that what you do? Do you have like a big case? I have a little garden bag. Four knives. Oh, you roll it out? Can we put the spot where there's all the bags of the case? But if my memory serves me correct when I ask you this, you actually bake some serious cash doing this, don't you? Yeah, I do, but it's kind of slow for me. I know, yeah, because it's, it is, is this like a white thing? This thing I was seeing like fundraiser where it was a mattress fundraiser sale? Mm -hmm. uh, exactly, like, <laughs> like, like I, I mean, mattresses are not like, if you said, dude, shiny, I'm raising money to go to the mainland for my debate team, buy this box of tortilla chips. Even if I don't like tortilla chips, I still like you and I'd buy three, five, seven dollar bag of tortilla chips. But like a mattress is like hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars. Like, and something you should probably make a good investment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and I do like, and then it's like, oh, try right. like we didn't plan this, right? You're like, oh yeah, I got my bag here. Here's a bag of tortilla chips. <laughs> what are you doing with a mattress, right? I mean, why? Did, and this is unique. I never heard of any place, certainly no place on the mainland that uh, <laughs> we've had we a mattress fundraiser at my high school once. Did you? We we it was. It was basically like two mattresses <laughs> to like raise the money needed. <laughs> right? No, actually, it was funny. Um, we, we got that, we got our mattresses mm -hmm. from, there's, uh, have you been to the Front Highway Shopping Center? Mm -hmm. You know that bed store? The bed yeah. store? Or, I don't know. Which one? Yeah. Yeah, then they're yeah. from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got our mattresses from there, mm -hmm. and then we had to sell at least $2,000 to break even. We sold like about eight mattresses. And how much piece? That was a good price. So like ten to two hundred dollars for this whole thing. So so how much was an average mattress cost? We sold it for two fifty. What like, who's buying these? Like I guess people who need mattresses? Yeah. <laughs> this is such a small market. Right? I mean that's the thing, right? I mean again, buy my tortilla chips for my poor kid who's raising money for preschool. I bet you I could get at least a fairly <clears throat> large number of people to say, yeah, I got five bucks I can give you, right? It's all a racket in there anyway. But like, buy a mattress for my son's fundraiser? I'm gonna get more no's than yes, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, I'm used to the no's already because you don't even well, know. Yeah, you must be, yeah. The, 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 it's such a small market, so with cutlery. Like, as well as mattresses. As well as mattresses. So <laughs> I'm thinking what I'm gonna do now is Along with the yeah, and it's like if you buy this set after the free thing, yeah, you can do that. But what about the mattress? Where you yeah, so, so you only sold eight mattresses and you raised enough money with eight mattresses. Yeah. What about funny. the Campbell? Did you guys do that mattress fundraiser? I saw a sign for it in Manoa saying like mattress fundraiser, and I had the I've seen two crazy signs in Manoa. Two crazy signs. One was bird missing. <laughs> well, the guy lost his pet bird. I'm trying to think, like, isn't it pop? Like, of the animals to lose? Like, birds have got to be impossible to find once they're gone. Um, so that was one sign. That's at East Manoa and Manoa Road at that corner. And then, yeah, the other one was at Lowry and Manoa. It was, yeah, my mattress fundraiser. Where a high school was doing like a band fundraiser, the band needed to go to somewhere, and they were selling mattresses to get the money. Was this huge Manoa marching band? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not buying their mattress though. <laughs> um, but right, they've got like signs like saying, "Dude, you need a mattress." Like call this number. That's just such a different approach. Well, we sold brownies. I'm saying I sold some brownies, um, mattresses. Books. I think the books the, that would seem to be hard. Well, here's not, the notebook yeah. by Nicholas Sparks. Like, who wants to read that, right? You have to find the person who wants to read it, right? I mean, <laughs> See, that's easy, right? All you get is the person who's like allergic to chocolate who can't read it. Oh, we also had a hydrofoxy razor. 
That's kind of nice. Yeah. Because I mean, how many do you lose in a year? Probably one or two. So that's not too bad. We should do a fundraiser. What do we sell? No, but the thing is, we didn't sell a lot of hydro glass. Big fires, huh? We didn't sell a lot of hydro glass because they ruined it. Because I wanted this a, a good style of mm -hmm. nothing on there. Yeah. They implanted the charger symbol on there with Pro City High School. Mm. And it's like, oh, I don't think like that. So, wait, you were saying that people don't want to advertise it with the Pro City or? Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's just me saying there's too many stop signs and stop lights. You're no, no, there's just one intersection. That's literally on the main road from mm -hmm. the freeway. Yeah. I literally, I, I stopped there and I read an article for 10 minutes. Yeah, so it should be. Good thing it's profound. What if we had to do a fundraiser? What would we do? That's a really good question. What should we do? It's got to be something people wouldn't share. It's got to be something that people would want. It's got to be something that's cheap enough that people would buy it almost regardless. This is what a chocolate bar is. Is that good? It's between donuts. Brownies. You know, it's between donuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's, uh, they have a, a Valentine's Day like, breakfast. That's old couples like. Do they get flowers when they go to this breakfast? Uh, no, actually, you get served. Like, if you, if you, if you come in with your couple, you're significant other. You get served like that. Mm -hmm. What if you're not with someone? We should do one where there's also one for single, where we then like mix and match people up. Ooh. Ooh. Like, we just did a uh, show a picture of your ex and you got a free thing. So. Oh, I see. We could do it that way too. Yeah. Okay, so how many? If you have a lot of S's, you get a lot of. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of wings in. Yeah. Oh, this is perfect. You got, you got a lot of X's. Now, you get a lot of we actually don't have class on that day, but. Like other classes, class on Valentine's Day. So we could do something where we offer it for sale to them. Um, yeah, there's like. Sixteen people in that class. Oh, I can't do it. I have my second Yep. So, yeah. What are you guys going to do for the Valentine's Day? Obviously, you haven't made plans yet because you're looking at the day. You have to um, work probably, right? Yeah. Oh. Hey, baby, I love you. Let's go to Cheesecake Factory. There's something cool happening the next day. Oh, yeah. I keep seeing these buses, tourist buses advertising. That's an m and though. I mean, it's past his prime now, right? I mean. True, but I want to see the Yeah. 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 It's just like Hawaii so fascinating. Why does Hawaii get like. People that were popular 20 years ago. Like, they're like Shaggy being popular in Hawaii. Oh my gosh, my uncle went to Lionel Richie concert. Oh my god. After all night long, like, what else does Lionel Richie do, right? I mean, no, okay, it was funny. My uncle said, I'm sorry. He got, he got, he wanted tickets for free, that's why, mm -hmm. on like KC Carefully. Mm -hmm. And then he had the crappiest seats, but also kind of the best seats. Mm -hmm. So, like, imagine the stages here, right? He had mm -hmm. the audience in here. He was right. Here. Yeah. So he was stage behind it, but there was a huge TV here, mm -hmm. so it felt like they were in the front. Hmm. I haven't gone to a concert yet here in Hawaii because there's been no one in here to me yet. I think that's a big issue because it's a very limited venue. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. And then, but see, the thing again, too, for why is why does people, why do people in Hawaii really love comedians? We don't. It's just we. we just pretty much. We're stuck on an island. If Canadians come, we're going to go on the mainland. Like, mm -hmm. they're like shitty ass bars to me. <laughs> you know, like, and no one, like. Um, there's, uh, um, like, Winter Wonderland, like, all the race. race. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm, I'm on the neighborhood board for Wakahu, and then, like, mm -hmm. it's a big issue when, uh, Council members and like state senators come and like mm -hmm. they're because the past one in Wahiwa, mm -hmm. they didn't have their permits for it. Mm -hmm. So oh, then yeah. Winter yeah. Wonderland as a company is like, I don't know, they're, mm -hmm. they're in the security. I talked right. to a guy who went to that. He said that everyone was in ecstasy oh, and yeah. he said that, like, yeah, they had to pay like $20 to park. 
You couldn't bring in water. You'd pay three dollars for every water you wanted. And it's also like getting out with shit too. Like that's right here. There, yeah. And it was supposed to look legit, right? Because there was like no parking, like legit looking signs. But then, well, I yeah, I I went and they did not hide it at all. Like I think mm -hmm. they didn't care. They didn't need to care. They made so much money already, so yeah, they could just pay the fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the company, the place that held them, yeah, they they're, they're well, both the cup Winter Wonderland and and Honolulu Country Club is getting fine. That's what it was, because it was at a golf course, right? Yeah. Dude, I don't know why people say that go to school, right? It seems like we can make a lot more money doing like underhanded things, doesn't it? Do like, <laughs> you think any of them know how to do this? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, you could have, I think my five year old could tell you overcharge people for water when they can't bring it in. I mean, you make crazy money of that, right? Yeah, I don't know. So what does that mean? The good guys always finish last? Is that what it means? Well, how would you like legally push for a raise though? Because it, it's like 90% well, yeah, no, no. of the people there are not sober, you know? Oh, maybe um, can I offer them a free ticket? Oh, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll take so much access to we'll remember what the event was like. And, Catch them in a compromising, like, oh, like it takes a photo of them in a compromising position so that they can't complain. I don't know um, how you vote, you know, what I think that means. I think we need a class, right? Should we do a class or like how to organize a, a raid party? Uh, week one would be a good theme, like Winter Wonderland. That's a great name, at least, right? Getting yeah, credit for that. What do you buy? Do you do food? Do you just do bags of chips that people buy? Water, obviously. Uh, what else? What, is, what are we teaching? We're teaching you how to start an illegal raid. <laughs> now you can add it to other things. Like it doesn't have to be. It could be uh, illegal comedian, unsanctioned comedian. Um, like favorite disciple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can do whatever you want, but I think. We should formalize this and make this a class. Um, but I think that raises a pretty good point. Shouldn't there be some formalization, right? There's got to be like tricks of the trade that people know of how to do it. They must know something. Why do they got to keep it secret from the rest of us? Plus, someone from the Y Paul board could then take it to like learn what the other people in the know know so they could then subvert the system. I'm taking this way too long here. <laughs> but, um, okay, let me go to our site and do the whole thing. Uh, okay. Yeah, so is everyone getting grumpy about that on the board level then of like, um, what do you guys, what are people grumpy about though? Are they grumpy about the lost tax revenue? Are they grumpy about people like taking a piss on the side of the road? What are people pissed about? Where do we they, go? Well, oops. Mm -hmm. you get a representative for like each project that happens within your neighborhood district, mm -hmm. and also like uh, city council members and state senators and a governor representative come and discuss what they're working on. Mm -hmm. So it's really like current events. The board members don't bring up issues; mm -hmm. they more comment on the issues presented. But mm -hmm. currently, rail representatives show up at every meeting, and then they just get. Yeah, you know, they get a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. a lot of mm. So it takes up all the time. It's sometimes, yeah, yeah, and it's like. Very but is it that interesting of an issue for like how? Oh, I mean, they would seem to benefit very greatly from it, or are they just you know, like, help? Uh, I mean, they're benefiting more than everyone else, right? I mean, from the rail. Well, yeah, I mean, not right now. There's so much construction that that. True. And my problem is already very congested. Um, yeah, I wish I knew. I moved to a year too late, so I wouldn't know. I couldn't have fixed the problem. Um, but I mean, a lot of the council members and senators do not want raids anymore, so yeah. 
Keep on going. Go, go. So what does that mean then? If we want social change, right? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that we need to encourage people to go to more of them so that when they then become state senators and representatives that they're then not so old fashioned about it? Like what do we need to do? Um, if we want to make them not so well, I feel like it wouldn't have been a problem if they just got their permits to have to have had it. No. Gotcha. They could have just postponed it until they got the permit. But they would have never given them one because old yeah, diddy, old auntie, you know, I whatever. Know where you would get Unless we told old auntie, hey, here's a free ticket to go to a rave. We'll give you a good time. Yeah. And she's like, I mean, I guess. I, don't know. I think there's misinformation, though. I mean, I mean, but they're not wrong. Like, exactly. See, like, this is exactly what I'm saying. It's Wait, who are you saying is not wrong? Wait. I mean, there's definitely a lot of drugs at. Rate, You're exactly but, where exactly so, where I'm going. Yes, there's not all the market, bad. Yes, yeah. there's bad shit. Of course, there's bad shit. Yeah, but like, dude, bad stuff it. going on everywhere. Yeah. And everything you go to, there's always something bad happening. Yeah, I mean, but people clearly want to go do it. So it's because people feel all high and mighty when they say, "Don't go and do this." Okay, now I sound like a really judgy person, but. <laughs> But usually it's the person that, like, it's the people who feel like, who sound like really. I understand why it's hard to push for it. Yeah. Yeah. Is what? What's it called? It's yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, see, this is what we would t discuss in the class, right? Yeah, why? I mean, I'm sure people do ecstasy at just normal time. Exactly. One of you is probably on it right now. Right? <laughs> 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 probably not. This class is going to be really crazy. <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, so I guess issuing permits is not going to stop the flow of drugs. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it goes back to the whole thing of like, yeah, how do you stop people from doing drugs? Yeah, you can like try to physically stop it from coming in, but it's probably easier to deal with the demand side of it, right? Which would then be, we should let raves exist, but maybe we could say, dude, you could have just as great a time at the library, right? Or, you know. Yeah, silently, yeah. Um, right, but I mean, it's how you get people, again, I'm not, right? Why do we not do as many dog fights, right? I mean, I mean, right? I mean, it's the same kind of thing, right? I mean, you might find what I just said really reprehensible, just like someone when they heard rape thought, oh my God, right? I mean, maybe you just have to have a, a culture where, dude, dogs fighting is not nice. Uh, well, I think, right? And I don't think I would go to one, which is kind of the same thing you need to get people to do if they're, you know, they're doing the other thing, I guess. Yeah, where's this class going today? <laughs> What on today? Um, oh, it was recorded too. <laughs> yeah. No one watches it, so I don't care. Oh my god! Well, I mean, yeah. What are you, you going to do? It's hard for me to defend it at this point, but um, I'll still post it with academic freedom. <laughs> if it doesn't apply to all anything I said here, but. Um, no, but you know, as a see, I'm sympathetic to your point. As a Catholic, it's all about thou shalt not. Uh -huh. I mean, the one thing you can do, which is drink, dude. That's why we all drink all the time because, like, it's the one sin you're allowed to commit. So you know, like, if you're trying to find, you know, generalizations are generally true. That's how they became a generalization. So if you're looking for a drunk Catholic, it's actually not too hard to do because. Dude, someone think, at Notre Dame, for instance, parietals. You cannot have someone of the opposite gender in your room past 9 p.m. And in your suite, you can't have them past there past 11 p.m. Ever, right? So, like, obviously that's foreboding. But you can be underage and you can't have uh, beer, but you can have hard liquor. Well, and clearly, you know, people go to town then. Um, Let's see, who else can I piss off in this class? Um, okay. Um, I want to go to. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So you need a new name. You need to find some way to get people to approve it so that they can do it legitimately. I mean, in some sense, I can't really blame the operator because they knew they were going to get shut down if they did it legit anyway, so you may as well just do it then. Right? Seeking forgiveness from permission, right? You have to hope you made That's a whole class. That's right there. There's one topic right there. Seek forgiveness, not permission. That's a whole week of class right there. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, get fired today. Um, so, so I guess their goal was to make more profit than, than the fines would accumulate to. Exactly. So I'm sure they did. If they're charging three dollars a bottle, did you go to it too? No, the tickets are like fifty five dollars. Did you guys go to it? No. But you wanted to, didn't you? I heard a lot of West Oahu people went to it. Like. Enough people I've talked to when I asked what they did, they said that. They went to the oh. Yeah. So, you know, uh, they're obviously going to be my teaching assistants for the class. Um. <laughs> oh, field trip, right? I mean, we'd have to do one of those. I need enough people to sign up for this class. Um, that's what I do. But see, the problem is, right, a class like that can easily become a problem. Yeah, the class sounds cooler than it really is uh, because, right, like there's that class being offered um, this semester on the office, right? But you don't get to just watch the office. So like, right, so already we can have problems if I don't advertise it appropriately as well. Um, wait, wait, I think you should have all the rights. No. All the rights? Well, um, I can, I don't care. <laughs> See, and that's how we know that you're the one who's on X right now. <laughs> you can lay on the ground if you want to. It's okay. Um, oh, I got you. Yeah. What? Uh, no, I'm actually finishing up topic two still, uh, which is yeah, we're a little bit behind, a little bit. Um, uh, what do I need? Um, so I'm finishing up topic two. Um, I don't know very many people that are on that do stuff on the black market, so I'm not that exciting. 
I don't think any of you thought that it was, but but the most exciting person I know is the C, um, CEO of Aloha Green, but that's like legalized medical marijuana. So that's about the most exciting person I know. That's pretty low, right? Because he's actually doing it legit. So when you talk to him, it just sounds like a boring banker guy. Um, where, does, where does our state's legal marijuana come from? How yeah, that's a good question. So most of it, from what I hear, from what I hear, most of it, most of it is, yeah, so most of it's either, it's one of two ways. Either it's coming in really cheap from the mainland where you obviously, it's easier to hide it, to grow it in mass, or it's people growing, from what the data I've seen, it's people growing let's say 150% of their needs and then selling the remaining 50%. Uh, but you have to do it then where the land is plentiful enough and there's not enough people to bother you, which then makes it pretty easy, right? Big Island, right? Leeward side of Oahu Island, right? Um, parts of Kauai, right? Middle, pick the middle of every island, right? So, but basically you don't have, I mean, from what I hear, you don't have a lot of, it's not very oligopolistic in terms of growing as it is on the mainland. And I think it's probably just the cost of delivery that make growing it on the mainland and bringing it here that make it not really cost. Um, makes it pretty cost prohibitive. Because then who do you sell it to here? I mean, yeah. tourists? Um, California? What? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's coming from California for the most part because obviously the transportation costs are lower. You can get it still here pretty fresh. Um, the only problem, right, is that the risks of detection are much easier, obviously. So, um, which is complicated further by the fact that we already inspect all the agricultural goods that come in anyway. So then. Hmm. Right? Yeah, you told me about this during the shutdown, how you didn't have to do. Yeah, well, see, now the shutdown's done, so now marijuana will fall. Yeah. The, yeah, so now, now the longest shutdown is done until the 15th of February. So then we'll see in the 15th of February what happens. Um, who knows? Uh, I think it's a little dumb, but what do I know? Um, all I know is that Sonia Sokik, uh, my wife's bridesmaid, was so high and lofty and she's so annoying. Uh, she works at the FDA, they had to shut down. My wife like texted her like, oh, are you, do you get off? Is this affecting you? And she texted back like, this affects all of us. I'm obviously adding a different tone because it's a text message, but that's how it sounded like. This affects all of us. I'm like, geez, like, I wonder if you have free time. It's not like, trying to, like, I want to go on strike. You know, I don't even know what I would do with my time if I went on strike. Um, okay. So this is kind of where we left off the conversation. So um, I know I don't, I don't have that much remaining time. But um, I want to finish this topic, topic two, so we can get to topic three then um, next week. Um, so this is me kind of describing, again, um, characteristics of what people want in cars. And so if you kind of remember from your notes from last week, this was me saying something like, in my car, the first, the 95 Chevy Lumina I had, it didn't have power steering or power brakes. Whereas today, it would be really odd to find a car that doesn't have those characters. Um, right, if we were looking at a car 30 years ago, air conditioning was an option. Right now, it's hard to find a car with that. Why that's the case is largely reflecting, again, things where people would say, I would never buy a new car without power steering. So you get up to those people where then the manufacturer saying, dude, that's just such a niche market to make cars without power steering. We're just going to make them all with power steering. Um, but so, right, you can find this for multiple kinds of products where um, there's just no option to buy the good without that characteristic. 
Um, why is that? It's not because the business is being all high and lofty and just trying to like make people do something. I mean, ultimately, as much as we all hate to admit it, I mean, in some sense, the customer is king. Not really the customer is always right, but the customer is king, right? You can't push something on someone on someone that they don't want it, right? Like the resistance right now, for instance, in the University of Hawaii system is this whole thing being anti-online education. I mean, in some sense, right? It's kind of what students want. And I, I mean, I'm not like, I don't like teaching online. I don't think I'm as effective as teaching an online class as I am um, in person. Yet at the same time, the reality is, right, people want it online. So what am I going to do, right? I have some colleagues who refuse to teach online, who will never do it. Uh, then I have some that teach only online. I don't know if either of those is a good solution. So I'm trying to achieve something in the middle, right? Which is kind of what you're seeing here, though, as well, right? Where <laughs> most of the time, most of the time, right, there is some middle solution where you offer some of one thing, some of the other. Um, obviously, there are schools out there that do only online. There are some schools out there that probably do no online. But for the most part, those are the extreme examples. For the most part, there's some combination of the two. And again, it gets really rare that, like, what if I wanted to, I'm assuming Starbucks doesn't sell hamburgers. Um, what is it sell? Breakfast sandwiches, yeah. But right, if I wanted a burger, right? Starbucks is deemed to do. No one's getting a burger and coffee. No one's getting, right? This is not, I mean, I'm sure that they would if they thought there was enough people that would buy it. But there isn't, right? Just like on the other side, right? That McDonald's now has some breakfast that they sell all day long because they do. Who doesn't like an egg McMuffin in the middle of the day, right? Kind of thing, right? Um, so for the most part, it looks like that, but the curious solution is always this, the corner solution. So um, let's look at the example again of my mother-in-law. I love my mother-in-law. I actually do. I mean, I live with her. She lives with us, right? I mean, I like my in-laws. They've lived with me ever since I got married. Um, but she gets food stamps. She gets $255 a month. Now, what that means, right, is that she has to spend that on food, right? And only really on cold foods, unprepared. Right? I think she can get prepared but cold food, right? It's just not prepared with hot foods, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what that means is that she, she's only buying the food for herself. She's the one that's eating it. But that means that um, she has to buy that and only use it for food. Maybe, right, <coughs> she doesn't like to do it, right? What if she just, like, what if she didn't know how to cook and she wanted to buy half the pair of foods? She can't do that with food stamps. But the food stamps require her to buy $255 worth of food. See how the difference is? What if I gave her $255 in cash? From an economist's perspective, that's the best solution because then she gets to decide how she's going to allocate it. Right? But if I give someone and I say, here's $255 of food, it is possible. No, what this is describing here is that it is possible that she does not need $255 of food, but she needs an extra $50 for medicine or whatever. So something like Social Security allows her to distribute that money, right? And Social Security money, you can use that on whatever you want, right? You go lottery tickets, go to Vegas, do all those things, but you can't use food stamps to buy a plane ticket to go to Vegas. So what you see here, again, are corner solutions, where if I told, again, like another example would be, what would be better? Uh, so my kid goes to private preschool. That's a spoiled kid, right? Um, right? And so private preschool costs, like, sad to say, it's actually more than your tuition. Um, <laughs> right? It's like 12000 or something like that, 12 or 13000 years, right? Yeah, see, exactly, right? So what if I said to you, right, what does it be one, like, I would give you either $12,000 cash, or I'll pay for your year to go here. What would you pay? $12,000 cash. Exactly, right? I mean, that's a pretty reasonable solution because then you might be like, dude, you know what? I'm just going to do my degree at LCC and pocket the difference, right? Or you might say, actually, it was still going to go here, so I'll just use it and pay. Let's say the tuition is back. I'll just use it and just pay the tuition. If I give him cash, 
and he's like an earnest dude that wants to stay here, he'll use the cash in exactly the same way as me saying, you can only use the uh, $12,000 for financial aid to go to school here, right? So it's like what you get to use for financial aid, right? They always give you a big fat check, right? And say, do whatever you want with it, right? Yeah, get like, uh, right, you gotta go to the bookstore to buy your book, right? You gotta go, right, you use it for tuition. You can't use it to go to Winter Wonderland. So, right, so you've got certain restrictions on what you can use financial aid for. But what it means is, dude, he clearly doesn't want to be here, right? Like you could say, right, you could create that scenario where he doesn't want to be here. But we give him financial aid that can only be used to go here. So he ends up consuming more education than he actually wanted to. Just like my mother-in-law, who's only buying food for herself, she actually doesn't use the 255 most months. So, right? I mean, it would actually be cheaper just to say, here's 255 bucks. We'd like you to spend it on food, but dude, you can spend it on whatever you want. So, financial aid, food stamps, obviously create different solutions than me just giving you straight cash. Or let's look at another one. So my wife, apparently Friday is teacher appreciation day at the preschool. It's not like twelve thousand dollars in tuition is enough. I appreciate that. Um, right. So my wife was trying to plan this teacher appreciation day, and we had it wasn't a fight because I know I was right in this case, but. Uh, because it's clear, I and mean, now you will be able to back me up, right? She wanted to give them a $75 Neiman Marcus gift card. So I was like, dude, just give them a regular Visa gift card, right? Like the $5 you have to pay for each gift card, right, for a Visa gift card, more than offset, right? Because, dude, nothing is like less than $100 at Neiman Marcus, right? And it's also a really snooty store to go into anyway, so you're not going to like it, right? So there would be... Uh, probably half the class, none of us, half the class has never gone to a Neiman Marcus, and the other, right, there's probably one of you who would spend exactly $75 at Neiman Marcus, and the rest of us wouldn't give a shit. Um, why does everyone always get a Starbucks gift card? Because it seems like it's the thing where most people would want to go, though, right? And you're not going to offend anyone or piss anyone else off. But if you gave trips to me, but there's always the individual like myself would be like, what am I going to do with this thing now? Um, because I don't go there. I get to give it to my wife, I can give it to someone else who knows. But if you think about why does everyone give everyone else gift cards when actually the best solution would just be give people straight fat cash, right? And that would be the best solution. Uh, because you know, whatever the fuck you want with it, right? I mean you're not gonna get from your grandmother uh you know cash that can only be used to go to Winter Wonderland, right? If that's what you really want to do and your grandmother cares about your utility, it'd be better for you just to give you cash and say, do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, ooh, that'd be week five in class. Gift certificates <laughs> and gift cards, right? And we've got to get to that racket, right? Like UK Fernandez, you know, when they do those rides, now you have to buy that fancy card to now do it all. Think about how many people lose their card every year. I mean, I lost mine from last year already. We know what kind of was coming up. Do you, do you think gift cards are like, I don't know, I, I want to say like a short term investment into a company because they're holding on to your money when you use it? Yeah, no, I mean, dude, seriously, if you think about it, the company is the only beneficiary in that situation because, right, 5%, whatever it is, 5%, let's make it up, 5, 10% probably get lost and never redeemed, right? And then, then you've got the people who would then forced to buy it there, but the company gets to bank the cash from an accounting perspective. So from mm -hmm. an accounting perspective, and Kristen, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think what happens is that from an accounting perspective, the gift card gets booked immediately as revenue. So the accounting rules change because I think it's like five or 10 years ago, it only got, it only counted as revenue when it was actually used to buy something. But for firms, right, then their quarter four looks really good because everyone's buying these Starbucks gift cards. But the sales recognized in quarter four when the gift card was bought, not when the gift card was used. Um, yeah, so the, that would explain why companies say if you buy a $30 gift card, it'll give you like a $5 bonus because it's a pretty sweet cash, right? You're going to have to go there. And um, I guess Starbucks, you guys are the. You guys have fallen into that pretty quick, right? I mean, you to get that. Is that right, Kristen? When does it get booked? I think it gets booked the quarter you. I thought it would be the time of when 
Um, no, but the coming will just, so it either changed one way or the other. Either the way I'm saying was the old way or my way is the new way. Someone look it up. Do we have Google? Someone look it up. I'm curious. No, I think because the cards are not interchangeable. Like if I promised to do work for you and you gave me $1,700 for it, yeah. then that's unheard of. Me. But if I buy a gift card, I cannot, it's typical that I can't change that back. So it's not in a separate account waiting to be dropped for me to use it. It just goes straight into their website. So yeah, that I think purchase. what it is is that when you purchase it, that's where you go to your own website. See, I think it. I think you would have to. You would have to. I think you would book it when the gift card is bought. That, 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 you're going to sell, so that is revenue for them. And then, because they're like canonical main bank account in that card, and you swipe it, and it moves to six feet after that. Because right, the product being sold from a debit. Right, is the card itself, right? It's just inventory basically. What does it say? Because I, mean, I feel like if I bought a million dollars of card, that's essentially revenue that Starbucks could use. Or exactly. Whatever. Well, whatever they want to do. Yeah. What? That's how they pitch it. Yeah. What? What's going on? Yeah. sense would be misleading though, right? Because then quarter four for Starbucks would be like huge, huge growth, but then the product will actually be consumed in quarter one, quarter two. What does the rule say? Um, companies cannot recognize revenue from recognize it on the balance sheet, right? I'm just doing an extra accounting step, right? Which is just saying, basically, the, the sale of the gift card is deferred revenue um, on my asset side, and then I'll just slowly accumulate debits as the card is used, right? And so I lost? Yeah. So I'm still booking a huge thing in four. But it's going to be a less a country. So, right, so, ooh, so we could look at Q4, look at the 10K, for Starbucks in quarter four, and you can see this huge deferred revenue. Yeah, and then it's like on a different entry. You get it, and um, getting cash doesn't deferred revenue. Right. So what happens if you never use that gift card? Does that deferred revenue? Yeah, so what, well, then right, it expires after. Does it expire or no? Yeah. When gift card value is not revealed until three weeks, that claim per advantage is triggered. Uh, the new recognition is not seen in the account of the company. The unclaimed revenue is a liability. The balance is the trolley. This is a big problem to a lot of companies with an annual estimation of $1 billion worth of unclaimed or unredeemed gift cards. How do you recognize these unredeemed gift cards as a breakage income? When the company issues off their gift cards, mm -hmm. they separately sell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if. Um... You can recognize um, breakage income in the company through the value of actual gift card exemptions. For example, the company sells $1,000 in gift cards. In January, the 
Hmm. Oh, so that means Starbucks was smart in kind yeah. of installing that app that basically means when you take that gift card and load it to your app. app. Does that so like when you go well, to Starbucks? That triggers it already because it's a transfer into your account. So that that kind of takes out that deferred revenue already. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, no, and then you could say the whole thing too, right? Like you register it and then we'll replace the money if it gets lost, right? So I'm looking here at the, so this is somewhat related to what we're doing, but again, most of you are not gonna be economists, so at least I feel like I'm serving the purpose of people only being in different majors. Because I'm looking at, from on the Starbucks investor site, I wanna see what, I just can't find it here. And I don't wanna read this whole thing. Um, but they were talking about deferred revenue in here somewhere. Um, where were they talking about? Stored value, 1642.9. How am I going to find that? There's no find key on here. I, I did. That's unhappy. Uh, oh, there we oh, go. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. So, Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly the outsized portion there. Stored value card liability and per current portion of deferred revenues. That'd be all gift cards. Obviously, they're selling a lot more gift cards than they were a year ago. Yeah. Well, I guess you guys did your job. Um, so more gift cards. So they're putting it on liabilities under rather than assets. So then I guess what's happening is that then it's transferring from liabilities and equities over to assets then I guess, or no, sorry, to costs. On your end, okay. Mm -hmm. no. um, let's just call it transfer. Or is that just this and one else? Okay. Well, clearly, Starbucks is doing. So, this is that. That's actually quarter three. That's not even quarter four which obviously they haven't come out with yet. So let's look at, let's go back here. Q4 2017. So let's look at last, sorry, it's not gonna go first. I'm just curious because this is like, uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm going to stop. Also, like, like a side note, like yeah. not related to any of that. No, it's fine. Um, yeah. I've noticed Starbucks gift cards have also been like, um, <laughs> well, the design has changed and they've also been moving from a magnetic strip because it's cheaper to produce a barcode, mm -hmm. to print the barcode than it is uh, to produce a magnetic strip. So you oh, could say that so it's easier to make a uh, I bet because then, right, because the thing can get demagnetized, whereas the barcode, right, is like, like the barcode. Someone's getting smart about it. Um, yeah, I mean, look at this though, right? So it looks like most of their increase actually happened this year. Look at that. So, right, that would be the year prior. So, 2016, 2017. And if my memory served me right, it was at 16 something. So, one. Just look at that number, one billion two hundred eighty-eight million of gift that, cards out there. Outstanding. I th yeah, they have that the app more too, and that reflecting. You, you showed quarter three earlier. That was like one point six. Yeah, one point six. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. one 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 thousand six hundred something. Right. So that's one billion dollar one billion six hundred some million 
that's bigger than some small economies in the world. And that's what's sitting out there in gift cards from Starbucks versus 1 billion 288 million versus 1 billion 171 million. That's, I don't even have a Starbucks gift card. So it, that seems crazy to me um, if you ask me, but um, so what do, I mean, what is the, the Starbucks gift card represent? It represents society's best solution to avoiding a corner solution. Right, if I gave you again a gift card to a calculator store, that's obviously gonna have a corner solution for most of you because you're not gonna want it. What we're saying here is that the Starbucks gift card for most people avoids a corner solution because the best case scenario to a gift card to a single store is that the person is indifferent or they're just as well off. Go back to my mother-in-law. What if my mother-in-law spends $260 a month in food, and you get to two hundred fifty-five dollars in food stamps. She's no worse off or better off, right? She's going to spend all two fifty-five on food using food stamps, and then five bucks on her own. But any the dollar less than two fifty-five, let's say it's two fifty-four, then the inefficiency for economists is that she was forced to overbuy food, and it doesn't increase her utility because she only wants to spend two fifty-four, not two fifty-five, or someone like myself. I don't go to Starbucks. I mean, that's not my thing. So giving me even a $5 gift card to Starbucks, and I've gotten the $5 gift card from Starbucks, I've always given it to my wife. Because for me, it's I'm not going to be happy. Even with this breakfast sandwich you discussed, it's already making me think about it. I'm still not going to want to go there and eat it because I don't even know how the line works at Starbucks, right? I'm going to be the guy who's like, what's that? What's in it? Right? I mean, I don't want to be that guy. I just want to avoid that. I'm going to give it to my wife and let, you know, she would know the whole order. Um, uh, but again, I, I will admit I'm a, a oddity in that situation where it's pretty odd that someone would be like that. And so that's clearly um, going to be a um, corner solution for me. So the corner solution, again, financial aid, gift card limited to a certain store versus a Visa gift card, right? So anytime I've ever been given a Visa gift card, you're losing, right? I mean, you can use that at the calculator store. Um, right, or anything like that. Um, we see this in other issues though too. Um, so it turns out that for instance, food stamps are actually a pretty good poverty reducing device because most people, my mother-in-law included, whatever little they give you for food stamps, most people need that and spend significantly more than that. So it's not a corner solution if I say $50 in food stamps because most people are going to spend more than $50 in a month. So it's no longer a corner solution when it's a really low amount. But the other side of it would be, you could also see this again for things like healthcare, where, right, like if I had VA benefits, right, and the big thing was like TRICARE, then, right, like, it's not like you get a big fat check from the VA saying, do whatever you want, we won't give out healthcare, right? is that you're basically given funds that can specifically only, even if you're given funds, so right, the money that the VA is spending can only be used for healthcare from certain places. So again, creates a corner solution, right, where you can have a um, homeless vet who's got great healthcare, right? I mean, clearly there's something where we could think, if we could ask the vet and say, dude, are you willing to have a little bit more diabetes but a roof over your head, right? If we gave a vet that option, right? That actually, I mean, right, but I mean, think about the trade offs, right? I mean, yeah, it seems like an extreme example I'm giving you, but from an economist's perspective, we all have to make those kinds of decisions, right? Like, I don't work out every day because, dude, I got like two kids I gotta take care of and I got a job I have to do, right? So, like, I don't work out at all, right? But if then you said, dude, Shady, you're gonna die one year from now if you don't start like banging some weights together, right? Then, like, okay, then, right, I will have to make an adjustment, just like, again, homeless vet versus, and great healthcare versus, right, would you be willing to suffer from some disease a little bit if we gave you the $300 you're going to need to treat that disease and just gave you $300 cash, right? And then you could then put a roof over your head. Um, seems extreme, but food stamps, and the other one is unemployment and benefits. Unemployment benefits have been almost always used up right away because the person's got no job and the amount is so low that the person usually spends all the money that they're getting. Um, not generally creating a corner solution. Uh, and here's the, uh, the financial aid story, right? So again, this is me telling my child, 
right, that what if I started saving for college for him right now, right? And I put it into an account called the 529 account. The problem with the 529 account, which is like a 401k, but it can only be used for higher education. My son would be better off if I just gave him fat cash, right? And I just put it in an unrestricted account because this is the cool part. Look at how the budget constraint changes. So now if I direct money to his 529 college only account, and let's say I'm putting like $10,000 a year in it. And what that means is it forces him to buy $10,000 of education a year. And then he can use the money, whatever other money he has, to do whatever else he wants. But he can't use the $10,000 on other things. He has to consume a minimum of $10,000 of college goods, right? And then buy everything else. That's kind of important, right? Again, just like me giving you financial aid and then saying you can only use it for X, Y, Z, right? To go to school rather than going to Olympic Wonderland. Did you? Um, do that thing where you um you bought years of college. Yeah, so the the five so I did open a five twenty nine. So I am actually completely guilty of creating a corner solution for my son, which is fine. I'm fine with it because I'm not putting that much. So the issue came about with this cool chart, which some of you have seen already, but. <laughs> Let's just see. I just want to chart here. This is going to be from 2009, so the chart's not going to be that cool. But uh, let's just take this one. This is still kind of dated. But the idea here was that tuition is going up at an, uh, for inflation greater than medical care and obviously greater than the general inflation rate. So there are 529s out there where you can insure against this risk and basically prepay for education at today's price, even though they won't use it 15 years from now. So it's a way to avoid what I know is going to be higher inflation. So inflation at the higher education level, again, is like 6%, what we were talking about, the Bommel's cost disease. This is like 6% versus like 2% for regular inflation. Yeah. But I'm creating corner solution. Because what if my son wants to run Winter Wonderland someday, he's not going to need a college degree to do that. Um, I don't know what he'll do with the cash. Um, uh, hey, dude, I'm not going to worry about it. I want to do what he wants to do. Um, I mean, because what am I going to do with the money anyway? I'll probably just waste it on something stupid anyway. So it's probably for the best of all things. Um, I just want to make sure I cover Anything else I want to cover here before? I don't want to do that. I know they always do it, but I don't want to do it. Is there anything else I want to make sure I cover? No, there's nothing else I want to cover. Um, that's it, I'm gonna leave it there. So we're not gonna do the revealed preferences or the um, cost indexes just because uh, I decided to focus a little bit more of my time on other things. So um, that finishes topic two. So we obviously did some problems associated with that and I'm gonna keep to this kind of schedule for the rest of these topics, which would be, we'll have the slides. So it might end up taking us a, uh, a class and a half or maybe two classes to talk about each topic because I wanna do the problems because again, I'll be useful for you when you do the, um, okay. Uh, so we're done. Um, so that would mean that we'll start then on topic three next week. Um, and again, we agreed to do two exams. So you have to tell me how you want to do it. And I don't care, but it's going to be useful for me if I know. Do you want it where, I'll tell you what I think you should pick, but then I will let you pick what you want. But we need to, I mean, and I don't care. Either way, I do not care. Uh, but we need to plan when you want to do the, um, the midterm exam. Do you want it before spring break and then do before spring break? Or do you want it to be given to you before spring break and do after spring break? No, so I'm two weeks regardless. I'm giving you two weeks no matter what. The question is, do you want to do before spring break or do you want to do after spring break? Before, before.
Yeah. What am I hearing more about you? Guys, someone that's on the background. Wait, did you have to say anything that you said you were going to say? Um. Yeah. No, I did. Um. My. I think the best solution. Um. Is actually having it do after spring break, but I give it to you a week before. Uh, a week before, so it's due right after spring break. That way, everyone's actually happy because if you want to do it before, you still have that week to do it and ask me any questions. Um, and then for those who have a shitty schedule for the spring, then you could be doing it during spring break. But what I found just uh, just out of observations over the past four years, that people usually do like as many hours of work as possible. So even though you think you'll get a lot done during spring break, it never happens. So that's my only concern, right? Is that if it's due before spring break, then you've got two weeks to do it and it's done before spring break and then you can actually, I found that grades are generally a little bit higher if it's due before spring break, but, um, I don't think it's different. I don't think they're higher, high enough to justify doing what you, you know, you doing like a 40 hour week or a 50 hour week if you're a part of that. So I just need to, um, well, it's a general sense of the room. What a general sense of the room? Before, before. If there's only, like, if only the two of you wanted after, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Honestly, it's going to be due right before spring break. I'm not going to be grading them during spring break. So I'll probably bring them on the plane with me. So your exams will make a trip to the mainland. But if history, if past is prologue, I'm not going to read them. I'll just drag them with me from here to the mainland and come back. So, okay. But I mean, if you want to turn it in after, we can take a second. Okay. Welcome to the world. Go buy a Starbucks gift card generally where the money's to be made or with your Wonderland. Uh, Winter Wonderland where it's at. Okay. Hey, yeah, does anyone want some? We still have some Alsace here. Come on, one for the road, huh? Alsace for the road, huh? Exactly. Yeah, I'll take one or two. I'll take no, I'll take two. I'll take one of each. Well, they're all right there. Oh, just put it into the little box in the first one. Unless someone else wants one. Pants? Oh, take one, dude. Yeah. Well, and he said that that was his nickname. <laughs> and I didn't think of it until he told me, actually. Um, so right, and I'm just trying to help him relive. I'm trying to help him relive his. You should seriously eat one. I don't want to eat three. What? I don't like that. Close the door. That closes your life. Really? Well, you Levi. Might, you might see. Why? Why is it? Corduroy. What about like corduroy? Like Japanese, like pronounced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Levi. 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 Yeah, because the L. Yeah. So, so that's how you pronounce it, like Japanese. This is like. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah. That's why I said that a ribeye, and now we call it ribeye. Ribeye. Yeah. I don't know. Starbucks gift card. I don't have one, and now I'm wondering whether I should. I have the app. Yeah. Do you use it though, or? Does the factory sell uh, coffee? Is it really? Yeah, but do you guys just get it from there? But you don't have to What? Yeah, see, I'm just, again, I've never... Never been a coffee person. So it's just hard for me to wrap my head around the idea that... I don't know. How's your guys' week been? Has it been good? Okay, well, I didn't want to get into everything Past weekend, Wait, shitty. I went to a, a rave. A party. Yeah. Not, not a rave. It was my our manager's uh, board of work party. Where's it going to? Uh, Cali. 
He's staying with the factory? Yeah. The more stores you go to and stuff, yeah. like, the more experience you get and the faster you can move up. So the manager had a party, a going away party. Did he organize it or was it organized for him? That's always a good plan. So did both of you go? Yeah, did you like fall asleep there? Like that's how you know it's a great party if you fall asleep there. I guess you have to worry about your sister, right? So it's not like you can go like crazy to town, right? You know, there's two types of parties, right? Yeah. One where you go last night, yeah. 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 Endure it. Yeah, yeah. How can you do it? Which one was this kind of party? Um, yeah, he was like break dancing on the floor. Really? People were telling me that. Like, a lot of very simple things happened. Like, was there. I kind of don't remember after that. After I got there. Was there um, a lot of um, factory food? Or was there no factory food? No, no factory food. So there was no. Wait, does the factory sell alcohol? No, I know. I know that. I would hope not. That would be a horrible, because why would you want to have, let's get out of work. I'm not working here anymore. Why would you want to have that as your... Yeah. I think it's not really good to drink. I mean, like, it's only good if you're going there 